Welcome to the latest remote edition of Audible PV News, bringing you stories from across the Mornington Peninsula. I'm Katie Sharp, and our top items for this edition are a bushfire hits Main Ridge, a small victory for Peninsula Aero Club, work begins on the Conti, Greg Hunt weighs into the AGL pipeline dispute, and Audible PFM's Extra Butter Show celebrates a milestone. Now for the full stories. As we begin to see the benefits of lockdown with fewer active cases, we go to Shivani Pillay for her weekly report. Thanks, Katie. As Victoria continues to record double digits and numbers statewide trend downwards, a sudden dip in the number of new coronavirus infections has put the Mornington Peninsula in the running to become Melbourne's first virus-free area. As at the 11th of September, the Mornington Peninsula dropped to eight active cases. Frankston also had a substantial drop to 15 cases, neither region recording any active cases. With the extension of stage four restrictions on the Mornington Peninsula, the push to define the region as regional has gathered momentum. Edward O'Donoghue, Victorian Shadow Attorney General and member for Eastern Victoria, spoke to RPPFM Lockdown to highlight the need for the peninsula to be defined as regional, enabling access to regional government funds, particularly during COVID-19. The Premier has flagged that regional Victoria could potentially be eased out of restrictions faster than expected if cases continue to decline. Regional Victoria needs to record a 14-day average below five and record zero mystery cases with an unknown source for two weeks in order to pro progress to the third step of the roadmap. The 14-day daily case averages from August 24th to September 10th is 65 in Metro Melbourne and 4.7 in regional Victoria. Remember, as of this coming Monday, curfew has been pushed back to 9 p.m. You and a friend or family member can now socialize and or exercise outside for up to two hours a day. People living alone and single parents can create a single social bubble. That's when you can visit another single friend or parent at home and they don't have to be within five kilometers of you. But if you're in metropolitan Melbourne, you can't make your bubble buddy someone regional. Mornington Peninsula Shire has cancelled its Schoolies Week safe space on the Rye Foreshore, scheduled for early December, in a bid to prevent crowds. Places like Rye are likely to be even more popular this year because young people won't be able to leave the state. Councillors voted on Tuesday to ditch the initiative over fears it would encourage young people to flout coronavirus restrictions, preventing large gatherings and expressed concerns about the ability to adequately and safely facilitate a safe schoolie space. The good news is that the council will investigate hosting a live online concert and a social media celebratory campaign to recognise the efforts of this year's graduates. And on the peninsula, in a titanic moment, $1,652 fines were issued to a couple on a joyride to Arthur's seat who were in breach of the five kilometre distance rule and an array of other road safety breaches. They were posing on the top of their silver sedan re-enacting the pose from the scene in the Titanic at the Arthur's Seat lookout. Let's just say their hopes and their romantic intentions hit an iceberg and sank. Rather, they hit the Somerville Highway Patrol, who happened to take a closer look. That's the COVID-19 update. I'm Shivani Pillay. Back to you, Katie. Thank you, Shivani. Fire broke out across Main Ridge last Monday after a roadside burn-off got out of hand in windy conditions. 24 vehicles attended and a Firebird helicopter was used to track the fire that ran along Limestone Road in Main Ridge before spreading into adjoining Greensbush. The fire was brought under control just after 5pm, by which time it had burnt through two and a half hectares. 
Meanwhile, the CFA has commended the thousands of Victorians who have registered their burn-offs with the department this winter. This action limits the amount of times firefighters are called out unnecessarily when someone reports smoke, as all reports are cross-referenced with the burn-off register. You can register your burn-off on 1800 668 511. The Peninsula Aero Club had a small victory this week when the Victorian Civil Appeals Tribunal ordered the Mornington Peninsula Shire to remove what's known as the Holy Hour flying restriction on Sunday mornings. The ban on flights from 9.30 to 10.30am was originally established to reduce noise for services at the nearby All Saints Church. However, the church has not been in operation since 1978, making the ban redundant. Both sides welcome the decision. Work on Sorrento's Continental Hotel has begun again. After the original developers walked away last year, a new consortium consisting of the Victor Smorgan Group, the Canat Group and developer Trenary Property has committed $100 million to turn the 145-year-old heritage-listed hotel into a five-star regional resort. The master plan includes 100 five-star rooms, pools, spas and gyms, a ballroom, restaurant and glass ceiling conservatory. The previous redevelopment came to an abrupt end in May last year when developer Stella abandoned the project. Since then it has remained a construction site but work is now about to get underway again. The consortium hopes to open in time for summer 2021-22. Peninsula Health has opened a clinic to help patients deal with the side effects of cancer treatment. Based at Frankston Hospital, the Symptom and Urgent Review Clinic will be part of the Chemotherapy Day Unit. Care nurses will provide advice either in person or via telehealth video and phone, saving patients from having to attend the emergency department during a pandemic. The clinic will also be able to identify and support high risk and vulnerable patients. We go now to David Robinson for the monthly financial update. The economic outlook remains as uncertain as ever. However, there's more evidence that the lowest point in the recession was in May, despite the Victorian second wave. An update of our views as we enter spring. The second quarter GDP fall of 7% was of course a record contraction, at least since the 1930s. But even with the tight restrictions remaining in place for Victoria, the national economy is expected to expand in the fourth quarter after a fairly flat Q3. The impact of the restrictions on Victorian businesses is savage, as policymakers walk the line between managing the health crisis and reopening the economy. And even beyond Victoria, business and consumer confidence are being tested with borders remaining closed. The 7% contraction in the economy was in the end better than initially feared. And when compared to other comparable economies, a shallower recession. Although that would give little comfort to impact to businesses and households. There's a clear correlation between getting the virus under control quickly and effectively, and minimising the economic damage. The UK, Europe and US are scary examples of the converse. But all recessions are costly and painful. The post-pandemic economy will rely on getting health policy and fiscal policy right for a sustainable future, as well as supporting businesses and helping them to rapidly adapt to the tectonic shift in consumer behaviour. The low point in the jobs market, which collapsed in April, was early May by most measures. Although the Victorian second wave continues to show the two-speed economy diverging. How this pans out in the months ahead will depend on how quickly the economy can be reopened in Victoria and, for the rest of Australia, also avoiding second waves and managing hotspots. One crucial part of this period ahead will be reopening borders, which will allow domestic tourism and trade to offset the complete absence of international tourism. Despite all these challenges and much worse conditions in most countries overseas, especially beyond Asia, the markets have regained lost ground. For the Aussie dollar, actually at a two-year high, helped by the weak US dollar and strong commodity prices. And for the stock market, while we haven't kept up with the US, with their indices again hitting all-time record highs prior to the latest correction, The prospect of the RBA keeping the cash rate down close to zero for two years or more to come is encouraging investors into equities. And hope springs eternal for a vaccine, which the government have committed $1.7 billion to produce locally, 
That's a drop in the ocean compared to the $900 billion in total government debt we're forecast to hit next year. But that number still compares favorably to the rest of the world. And lastly, the residential property market is still under pressure in Sydney and Melbourne, but continues to trade strongly in regional Australia and is near fresh record highs in Canberra, Adelaide and Hobart. It's likely to be a tough period for property with lower demand from overseas migration on top of high unemployment and the reliance on policy support. But that support, both monetary and fiscal, is still in place. And we'll hear more about it at the federal budget on October the 6th. And that's the market update from Bendigo Bank. When we return, Federal Member for Flinders Greg Hunt comments on the AGL Crib Point Gas Import Jetty and APA Pipeline Project. Battery World now open in Mornington. We know batteries. We know our 75 D23Ls from our DIN 65 LHs. And we know which is best for you. We have the range and a spark no one else can match because we live and breathe batteries. Those beautiful boxes and cylinders that power our lives and our passions. That's why we're the Batteryologists. We're Battery World. Battery World Shop 1, 43 Mornington Tyre Road, Mornington. Welcome back. Federal Minister and Member for Flinders, Greg Hunt, is opposed to the AGL Crib Point Gas Import Jetty and APA Pipeline Project. The same sentiment is heard across many local action groups, community groups and the Mornington Peninsula Shire. Audible PV reporter Deborah Mark continues to investigate the controversy surrounding the project with a statement from Minister Hunt. Thank you, Katie. I contacted Minister Greg Hunt's office requesting an interview and unfortunately, due to his work commitments in Canberra, he was unable to provide the time. However, he did send through a statement which reads as follows. I am unequivocally and absolutely opposed to AGL's proposed Crib Point Terminal. I am deeply disappointed at the Victorian government's position and refusal to listen to the legitimate needs and expectations of the community and will continue to fight against the project. Thank you, Minister Hunt, for providing that statement and closer to the time of the decision whether the AGL project will proceed, Minister Hunt will provide time for an interview then. A recent media release from Environment Victoria stated more than 10,000 people made a submission opposing AGL's proposed gas terminal in Western Port, setting a record for an environmental assessment process. Environment Victoria campaigns manager, Dr. Nicholas L. Burl said, a major concern is gas supplied through the terminal would create up to 8 million tonnes of carbon pollution, which is more than 7% of Victoria's current emissions. AGL's gas plant threatens our bay with toxic wastewater and the risk of ships striking whales or running aground and spilling diesel with catastrophic consequences, he said. The 11,000 page environmental effects statement put out by the state government was deemed weak and gives no confidence that the environmental impacts can be acceptably managed, as said by Monitor Peninsula Shire's Mayor Sam Hearn. When I interviewed Mayor Hearn for our news broadcast a couple of weeks ago, I asked why AGL pinpointed Western Port to operate a gas import jetty. Mayor Hearn couldn't answer the question, but did say that the zoning of Western Port allows for such industries to operate. A recent news report from MP News, which headlined emphatic no to gas plan, stated that more than 2,000 Monty Peninsula residents responded to an online poll the Monty Peninsula Shire put out. 
The one week poll revealed 93% opposed the terminal and pipeline and 7% were in favour. Communities and governments who oppose the terminal see no economic value to this project. The jobs that will be created are highly specialised and technical and most likely will attract workers with the expertise from other areas. I also want to acknowledge the commitment and dedication of the locals in Western Port area maintaining and protecting the environment to encourage wildlife, marine wildlife, the migration of birds to the wetlands and mangroves and to make it the wildlife sanctuary it is today. The environmental impact and loss of connection with the disappearing of wildlife will be damaging to the community's well-being if this project goes ahead. It's now up to the state and federal governments to make the final decision. Communities are calling on Minister Hunt to step up the fight. If you wish to contact Minister Hunt, call his office in Somerville or email him. The address is on your screen. You can also contact your local state MP for Nepean, Chris Brain in McRae. The state government is currently reading through the 10,000 submissions. In October, the hearings process by planning panels Victoria will commence. They will hear from environmental experts and community groups and will be carried out remotely due to COVID restrictions. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Deborah Ma. Back to you, Katie. Thank you, Deborah. Mornington Peninsula has been allocated $6 million from the federal government's 2020 to 21 Black Spot Road Safety Funds. The money injection comes after MP News reported 75 lives have been lost and 1,500 people had been seriously injured on Peninsula roads over the past decade. The project aims to reduce incidents and harm in high-risk areas with plans for improved pedestrian infrastructure, greater focus on safe speed limits and the introduction of roundabouts. Projects that were funded include installing crash barriers in Shoreham Road, multiple works at Mount Eliza Shopping Centre and roundabouts in Bitten, Durong and Dramana. Frankston Council has voted to give its CEO Phil Cantillon a 3% pay increase. The decision was made after benchmarking revealed Mr Cantillon was paid considerably less than the industry standard. Mr Cantillon was appointed as Frankston Council's Chief Executive last year after the departure of former CEO Dennis Hovenden. The news came in the wake of Mornington Peninsula Shire's announcement that its CEO John Baker had elected to take a pay cut during the current crisis. And RPPV extends warmest congratulations to RPPFM's Extra Butter Breakfast Show, which celebrated its 200th episode this week. Cindy and Daz have been bringing great music and laughter to the morning lineup since 2018. They've persevered throughout lockdown to keep smiles on people's faces and support local businesses. They celebrated with an amazing butter block shaped cake from Bella Cakes by Naomi. Here's to 200 more. Now we go to Alana with the coming week's weather report. Isn't the sun just glorious? I mean, who needs barley when it's sunny in your suburban backyard? It's Alana here with the RPPV seven day weather forecast for the Mornington Peninsula. Friday the 11th of September, it's looking like a beautifully sunny day. You can expect a top of 18 degrees, but keep in mind the cloud will be increasing later in the afternoon. And we're also expecting northerly gusts of up to 55 kilometers an hour heading into the weekend. On Saturday, we're expecting a top of 16 degrees. It will be raining pretty much all day though, and we're also expecting up to 20 millimeters of rain throughout the day so it's probably a good idea to stay inside and do that spring cleaning you've been putting off. On Sunday, the showers will still be about. You can expect up to 5 millimetres of rain at a top of 15 degrees on Sunday. It'll drop down to a low of 8 degrees overnight before climbing to a top of 15 degrees on Monday, where the showers will be easing, but we are in for some pretty squally southwesterly winds of up to 35 kilometres an hour on Monday. On Tuesday, there's only a slight chance of rain, so fingers crossed the cloud will clear for a beautifully sunny afternoon and a top of 18 degrees on Tuesday. Tuesday. On Wednesday we're in for some patchy early morning fog but hopefully a beautifully sunny afternoon as well and a top of 18 degrees. So spring is pretty much up and down like our feelings about this corona coaster but I hope you're all staying safe and staying connected and we'll see you next week. Bye for now. And that's all from our team here at RPPV News serving the community with stories that matter to you.
Remember to wear a mask when you go outside. If you're feeling at all unwell, get tested and go straight home to wait for your results. Keep watching and do tell your friends. Bringing you the news from coast to coast across the Mornington Peninsula, I'm Katie Sharp. See you for the next edition.